Thanks for joining us on News This Hour. We begin with political stories. The ruling All Progressives Congress can now conduct its planned national convention come March 26th. This comes as a high court of, in the Federal Capital Territory vacated an order stopping the national convention of the party built for March 26th. And while delivering judgment on the matter, Justice Bill Lukau argued that a political party cannot be sued by its member. The judge relied on a recent Supreme Court judgment, Aguma v. APC, to conclude his ruling. The ruling followed the twists in the leadership of the ruling party as his plans for the convention. Recently, there were tussles over the leadership of the party when Governor Sunny Bello of Niger State took over as the acting national chairman of the APC. In the absence of the Kertika Extraordinary Convention Planning Committee, CCECPC, of the party, Governor May Malabuni of Yobe State. But that has now been settled, as Governor Buni said all actions taken by his Niger counterpart remain valid. He reiterated that he duly transmitted power to Governor Buni, who acted on his authority while he was away. The Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Abubakar Malami, says the federal government will give effect to the court's judgment, ordering it to expunge Section 82, uh, 84, rather, subsection 12 of the amended Electoral Act. The AGF's position was contained in a statement signed by his special assistant on media and public relations, Omar Jibrilu Gwandu. He further stated that part of the law will be treated accordingly and will be recognized by the government printers in printing the electoral acts. Oh, still in the courts, the Federal High Court sitting in Umwaya, Abia State had held that the section was unconstitutional, invalid, illegal, null, void and of no effect whatsoever and cannot stand because it is in violation of the clear provisions of the Constitution. The section says, no political appointee at any level shall be voting delegate or be voted for at the convention or congress of any political party for the purpose of the nomination of candidates for any election. Our correspondent, TVC's Prince Uba reports. Last month, President Muhammad Buhari signed into law the long-awaited amended electoral act. The president raised serious concern on section 84 subsection 12, which he said is in variance with some of the provisions in the 1999 constitution as amended. <laughs> President Buhari went ahead to write both chambers of the National Assembly, seeking amendment of the section, but the Senate rejected the president's requests. <laughs> Worried by this development, a legal practitioner indicated that they headed to court for nullification of that section, which the court agreed with him. Reacting to the judgment, counsel to the plaintiff, Emeka Ozan, stated that the National Assembly is not required to further make any amendments to the section. It's inconsistent with the rights of Nigerian citizens when read with section 66 of the Constitution, 107, 137, 182, and now nullified section 84, subsection 12 of the Electoral Act. And as equally has ordered the Attorney General to, of the Federation to delete Section 84, Subsection 12 of the Electoral Act forthwith. Now, the implication of this is that it has provided a congenial atmosphere for politicking and political space for 2023. Council to the Attorney General of the Federation, Chris Levo, also agreed with the judgment. Originally, we honestly believed that it was inadvertence on the part of the National Assembly. It was a big error. And being gentlemen and um, distinguished senators and the members of the House, I think they will now go back and do the right thing. Since the court has made pronouncement on it, and that uh, put to rest every other issue with regards to that. So that we can move on with uh, the national uh, issues that are besieging us as a country and as a nation. The presiding judge, Evelyn Anyadike, holds that the Constitution has already stipulated that appointees of government seeking to contest elections were only to resign at least 30 days to the date of the election 
and that any other law that mandated such appointees to resign or leave office at any time before that is unconstitutional, invalid, illegal, null and void. Prince Oba, TVC News, Umuahia. Governor of Delta State, Ifan Yokoa, says he is committed to handing over a vibrant state to his successor and wants his team to stay focused in the 14 months left in his administration. Governor Kowa spoke at a two-day retreat for top government functionaries in Asaba. Ikena Mechi reports. It is a two-day retreat for commissioners, permanent secretaries, auditors and other top government functionaries. The significance of the program is mirrored in the theme focusing the administration to finish strong. Everything that needs to be done to make sure that the contract with Deltans is kept is exactly what we have come here to sit down to discuss in two days. Different resource persons took their turn to emphasize on the need for the team to remain on course as the Governor Okowa led administration is gradually coming to an end. So all I'm encouraging is that we must, on our own, decide and say, how do we mobilize and lead? I know that we are leading through mission, through vision, through values, and through character to achieve what we are supposed to achieve. There is no business that is more important than politics. It is through this politics that political leadership emerges. I'm hoping, like you and many people in this room, that the outcome of the 2023 elections would provide Nigeria opportunity for renaissance that would emerge the right quality of leadership. Governor Ifan Yokoa is one of the participants here. He commends his team for all the achievement recorded in the past years, but wants more commitment at this final stage of the administration. You must understand that as long as you're in government, you remain focused on achieving the goal to the end and in, in trying to ensure the success of the administration that you work in. That must be your priority. Like the Ministry of Education, Higher Education, we've established three universities. What is the pathway of giving strength to those universities that they become truly sustainable even when we leave? Everyone that has headed the office that has uh, uh, worked in the area of job creation and generation of entrepreneurs, they have really done so well. And that's why I've also analyzed and looked at things, and I just find that, please, commissioners, I want to plead with you, stay focused. The importance of this retreat is for the governor to refocus his team towards ensuring that the momentum all projects and programs we started is maintained to the end of his administration. It cannot amaze you. TVC News, Asaba. We're well, talking about the ongoing ASU strike. Members of the Youth Parliament in Ondo State have urged the leadership of the Academic Staff Union of Universities to review the industrial action in the interest of the country's education system. The youth also challenged the federal government to meet the demands of the striking lecturers in the interest of the students. They made this appeal at a sit-in in Akure, the state capital. Ayo DJ Moradeo report. The strike embarked upon by members of the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, has paralyzed activities in universities across Nigeria. The lecturers, among other demands, want better funding of the education sector. This issue and many others came up for discussion at the sitting of the Ndo State Youth Parliament in Akure, the state capital. The youth want both parties in the industrial dispute to shift ground in the interest of the students. The Speaker of the Parliament, Smith Ikumakpa, you said the strike has crippled academic activities in the universities. So, and the federal government that they should come together, should sit down and have a roundtable discussion on how to find a lasting solution to the demands of ASU. They should look into the demands and ASU should also please compromise too. They might not get all what they want for this, for the interest of the average student at home that is at the receiving end of this their action. Starting to look like um, a prevalent thing in Nigeria surrounding our educational system where the government have to force lecturers, teachers to go on strike affecting the education of the youth is really quite unfortunate and we can only still continue to 
plead and look up to the government to find a way around. The young parliamentarians also urge youth to take charge of the political space. They agree that more youths are venturing into politics, which they say should be given more push. The monetization of election is the demonization of the youth. It forces the youth to the corner and ensures that they look for every means possible, especially those interested in the art of governance or leadership. A workable policy that will be able to elevate you know, the standard of living of young people in this community. And I think that um, demography, young people, is a very critical segment of our society that we cannot afford. Parliamentarians also agree that aggressive participation in voter registration is of paramount importance for the young ones to take charge politically. IODG Moradi or TVC News, Akure. The appointment of Professor Adibaya Bamire as the new Vice Chancellor of the Bafemi Awolowo University, Leife, has been greeted with protest by some Ife indigents who want an indigent by uh, be appointed into the office for the first time in 61 years. The protesters vowed to continue the protest until their demands are met. Uh, Professor Adibaya Bamire, the current Vice Chancellor of Academics, is an indigent of Oyo in Odoti, local government area of Oshun State. Our correspondent, Rafi Hamid, reports. Obafemi Awolowo University, OAU, Ileife, was established in 1961. It has had 11 vice chancellors, and the tenure of the incumbent, Professor Iyitoke Ogumbodedi, ends on the 7th of June this year. In line with tradition, 16 persons applied to take up the job, and after necessary steps were taken, the pro-chancellor and chairman of council of the university, Owele Oscar Doji, announced Professor Adiba Yobamire as the new vice chancellor. In line with the provisions of the university's miscellaneous provision amendment act as amended, the report of the selection board was considered by the council, which after a careful and dispassionate review of the report, decided to appoint Professor Adiba Yobamire Bamire, a professor of agricultural economics from the Faculty of Agriculture of Bafemi Awolowo University, Leife, as the Vice Chancellor of the University with effect from June 7, 2022. But this was immediately greeted with protest by some people, especially the indigents of the town. They said an indigent of the town among the contestants must be picked as the successor to Professor Itoko Ogumbodedi. The protest continued on Friday as they shut the entrance gate preventing movement of vehicles in and out of the university. Carrying placards with various inscriptions, the protesters vowed not to allow academic activities take place. I've been leaning with OU community for 61 years. We own this land. Our fathers gave this land. This soil is ours. If we cannot produce a substantive vice chancellor for 61 years, we have failed. So what we are clamoring for is that for the period of five years, just a single time, test if we are somebody that can do it. Yesterday we are here just briefly, but today we are here. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday we'll be here. We want to show them that we actually mean business them around. We are not saying if they if it. We are saying if a federal constituency after 61 years, this is the 12th VC at the point. We are going to fight it to the last call. We are not saying there's no appointment in there, but in there should go back to the team and become a VC. The new vice chancellor is the current deputy vice chancellor academics of the institution and is expected to resume his new office on the 7th of June this year. Rafiul Hamid, TVC News, Ilaife, Ocean State. And that's it on the news this hour. Thank you very much for watching.